Hey guys, my name is Micah and today I will be telling you how to use the vocoder audio effect in Ableton Live. A vocoder is an effect that combines the frequency information from one audio signal, called the carrier, with the amplitude contour of another signal, called the modulator, which in other words means a vocoder can take the shapes and the kind of sounds, so think of a voice and the words you're saying, and it can put all these different mouth shapes and sounds and synthesize them and repitch them according to, say, the MIDI notes on that synthesizer. The modulator source is generally something with a clear rhythmic character, so for instance speech, you can hear when my words start and end, or drums, while the carrier is typically a harmonically rich synthesizer sound, such as a string or a pad, sawtooth waves also work really well. The most familiar application of a vocoder is to create a talking synthesizer or robotic voice effects. Vocoders work by running both the carrier and modulator signals through banks of bandpass filters. These analyze the shapes and the frequency contents of the signals, and then the output level of each of the modulator's filters is then analyzed and used to control the volume of the corresponding filter for the carrier signal. So how do you use it in Ableton Live and how does Ableton Live's vocoder work? Well I've got an audio track here and I've got a clip, so if I bypass the vocoder, which you find in Audio Effects Vocoder in your browser on the left, then this is what a voice could sound like. From the top to the very last drop. From the top. So the sample doesn't need to be melodic in any way, because you can use your carrier to change the frequency. So if I still want these words but I want it on, say, a pitch, or that he's singing, or that he's a synthesizer, then I can create the synthesizer sound I want on a MIDI track, which I've done here. So I have this operator instrument, which you find under instruments, and then operator and just pull it in, and uh, I just created a synth I like. Mine is primarily just this saw type wave here, and a few other little tweaks, and on its own, this is what it sounds like. So those are the chords I want, that's the melody and the synth type sound I want, but I want it with this kind of rhythm and these kind of word sounds. From the top to the very last drop. So this operator will be the carrier and this audio sample here, the voice, will be the modulator. Now if I activate my vocoder again, your vocoder needs to be on your modulator signal. So here it needs to be on the audio that I want to change, like the voice, for instance, or your drums or whatever. So I've got it on here and uh, I'll go through all these settings shortly but I just want to show you what I've done and under carrier I've chosen external because I'm using an external source for my carrier and then the rest you kind of can keep the same and this is what it sounds like. Just make sure that both clips are playing but that the synthesizer volume is all the way down if you don't actually want to hear the synthesizer volume. Now what you heard in the intro sequence was uh, something else. I think it's pretty cool. And basically that's a beatboxer put through this vocoder with the same harmonic material on this operator synthesizer. So let's jump into the details on the vocoder. So I'm going to be talking about the carrier over here and then I'm going to be talking about this graphic display and all of the controls and then I'm going to go to the right over here. So first of all you've got your carrier and next to it you've got a button that says enhance. If you enable the enhance button then your sound will be brighter and the enhance algorithm does this by normalizing the spectrum and dynamics of this incoming carrier. The reason you have the option of enhancing is that often external carrier sources can create an output on your vocoder that sometimes loses a lot of high end, so this is just a kind of way to bring it back. The synthesizer that I created was very harmonic rich and it had a strong high end so I didn't need to hit the enhance button for that particular example. Under your carrier you can choose which carrier signal you want and where to get it from. So you've got four options in Ableton's vocoder and you've got noise, external, modulator and pitch tracking. So I've already explained the external one. Noise uses vocoder's internal noise generator as the carrier source and if you select this an XY display is shown which allows you to adjust the character of the noise. The horizontal axis, so over here, adjusts the downsampling, so if you drag it to the left you're decreasing the sample rate of the carrier's output and the vertical axis adjusts the density of the noise. So if you want to decrease the density you're going to drag it down. Let's have a listen. A lot higher resolution as the sample rate increases.
Now, if you choose external, then you just decide which audio you're going to get. So this will be the name of your track. And I've chosen one operator, which if you look at my MIDI track over here, you can see that is the name of the track. And I can also choose if I wanted pre effects, post effects or post mixer. So if I want to synthesize the sound before any processing is done on it, after the processing is done on it, or after the processing is done on it, as well as all the processing or potential processing on my master track. And you've also got a modulator over here, and this uses the modulator itself as the carrier. So basically, your modulator is your voice or your drum or whatever you're trying to vocode. So I can actually vocode my voice with my voice's signal. <laughs> How does that work and what does that do? Well, this essentially outputs a resynthesized version of my voice or the modulator signal, but it allows you to use all of Vocoder's sound shaping controls to adjust the sound, which as we go on, you'll see can be very powerful, especially things like formant and depth and even unvoiced. And then the final one over here is pitch tracking. And pitch tracking enables a monophonic oscillator, which tunes itself to the pitch of the modulator. So if I was talking like this and I used my monophonic oscillator, it would decipher that I just kind of used a little major chord and it would use those pitches to revocode my voice. You get a whole bunch of additional controls here. You've got high, low, and your oscillator and your pitch. The high and low sliders allow you to limit the frequency range that the oscillator will attempt to track. So I've just changed my pitch to zero so you can hear the high and low a bit better. I was talking like this. I was talking like this. Same with the low, although my voice doesn't have a very strong low end, in case you haven't noticed, so this doesn't do much for me. But I can imagine for like a deep trailer voice, this might have a noticeable difference. Then you've got an oscillator over here, and you can choose between these four different waveforms. You've got a sawtooth or one of these other pulse waveforms. They look kind of like square waves, but they are slightly different, if you can see that. I was talking like this. I was talking like this. I was... You can change the tuning of this oscillator with this pitch knob. I was talking like this. I was talking like this. I was talking like this. Then you've got your unvoiced knob, and this adjusts the volume of an additional noise generator, which is used to resynthesize portions of the modulator signal that are pitchless. For instance, Fs and Ss and Ts. This little noise machine just adds little bursts and emphasizes those sounds. <laughs> I mean, that's extreme what I just did, but it's very obvious to hear how this unvoiced impacts the sound. And you can also adjust the sensitivity, which I just did, and this sets the sensitivity of the unvoiced detection algorithm. So at 100%, the unvoiced noise generator is always on. So it means even the softest little S will get this little extra noise punch. And if your sensitivity is quite low, it's only going to add this unvoiced noise generator on your really harsh s sounds. This fast slow switch at the bottom here adjusts how quickly the vocoder switches between the unvoiced and voice detection. Right, getting to this large central graphic area. This shows the levels of the individual bandpass filters. Which bandpass filters? Well, at the beginning of this video, you may recall, I quickly explained how a vocoder works. And how it works is it takes a modulated signal and it puts it through a ton, well not a ton, but quite a few bandpass filters and it analyzes the output of all those little levels and things like that and uses this analysis and shaping on your carrier signal, your synthesizer, to create that vocoded synthetic sound. So all these little yellow lines over here represent bandpass filters. And at the bottom left over here, you see it says bands, and you can decide how many bandpass filters you want. So the more bandpass filters you have, the more accurate the analysis is going to be because there'll be more data with anything. The more data you have, the more accurate your conclusions are going to be or the better you're able to draw conclusions on your studies. So if you only got four bandpass filters, you can see I've only got four yellow lines and the sound is going to be a lot more rugged because it's summarizing a lot of information and kind of averaging out instead of being precise. In case you don't know what a bandpass filter is, it's basically just a section of the frequency spectrum in your audio signal. If you want to know more about this or just the basics of audio signals and frequencies and all of that, please let me know in the comments and I will make a video on that in the future. Just a little note, if you have lots of bandpass filters, your analysis is going to be more accurate, but it, it does require more CPUs. Then to the right of 
bands. You have your range sliders, and these adjust the frequency range over which the band pass filters operate. So at the moment you can see here it says 12 kilohertz um, and 80 kilohertz. So this is the range, but I can change it. Say I want a bigger frequency range, I can put it all the way down. I mean, that sounds really boomy because a lot of these band pass filters are now analyzing the bottom end or the low end and that's not really adding to this nice high synthesizer that I've got here, which will do well with a higher range. We'll play around. Even if you don't like the low end sound, remember that these parameters can be automated and that would sound pretty cool. You don't always just need to use sine sweeps or like an auto filter. You can also use other parameters on your audio effects to create nice transitions. This BW over here is your bandwidth control and this sets the bandwidth of the filters. At low percentages, each filter approaches a single frequency. As you increase the bandwidth, you increase the overlap of the filter bands and a bandwidth of 100% is the most accurate, but higher or lower settings can create interesting effects. If I've got it on 10% and I change this range, I'll make it lower, you'll actually hear that the overall sound goes lower. Another really cool automation effect, so bear that in mind. Then you've got this other little rectangle here, which switches from precise to retro. Precise and retro are two types of filter behavior. In precise mode, all filters have the same gain and bandwidth, but in retro mode, bands become narrower and louder at higher frequencies, and this is kind of just to emulate older record sounds. To me, retro just sounds like it's got a high pass filter on it. And then to the right of that, you've got your gate and your gate sets a threshold for the filter bank. Any bands whose levels are below the threshold will be silent. And if you don't want to gate, just drag it all the way down and it says minus inf db basically means there is no threshold which basically means no gate. And then to the right of that, you've got your level slider and this boosts or cuts the vocoder's output. So I just wanna demonstrate this little pen over here so I can change the level of all my bandpass filters over here. And you can actually see how that affects the resulting spectrum over there. And then we get to our section on the right. Depth sets how much of the modulator's amplitude envelope is applied to the carrier's signal. So at a very low depth, the modulator's envelope is completely discarded, so it's just playing everything kind of at the same volume. If you set it to 100%, this results in your classic vocoding. Then below that, you've got your attack and release controls, and these set how quickly the vocoder responds to amplitude changes in the modulator signal. Very fast times preserve the transients of the modulator, but remember, always with very fast attack times, they can cause distortion artifacts. Then you've got your mono, stereo, and left and right signals, and they determine how many channels are used for the carrier and modulator. In mono mode, both the carrier and the modulator are treated as mono sources. Stereo uses a mono modulator, but processes the carrier in stereo, and the left and right processes both the carrier and modulator signals in stereo. Then you got your formant. And in case you're not sure what formant is, a formant is just the word used for the prominent bands of frequency that determine the phonetic quality of a vowel. So for instance, A and I. The frequencies of the carrier's filter bank can be shifted up or down via the formant knob. With voice as the modulator, small formant changes can alter the apparent gender of the source, with low values kind of being more rounded vocals and lower in a way, and higher formants seem to be a little bit more crisp. <laughs> Then you've got your dry wet knob and this control adjusts the balance between the processed and dry signals. So this completely dry is basically like the vocoder's bypassed and the higher it goes, the more the vocoder takes over until the initial sample is lost in the mix. Stop. Wrong. 
Right, let's talk about some vocoder applications. So, like I mentioned, you can use them on voices, like lyrical voices to create synthesizers or melodies out of them, or beatboxes, which is one of my favorite. I think it sounds pretty cool. Or even drums, which will create a similar effect than this beatboxing. With the vocoder. Don't forget that you can use the actual modulator signal as the carrier to just help shape the sound of the voice. And don't worry if you don't have samples, you can literally, if you have a smartphone, you can just record your own voice and um, have some fun. Thanks for watching guys, if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and I'll get back to you and I'm doing a video like this for each of the audio effects, so if you are interested in that please click subscribe and I will see you again in the next one.